On a frosty December day in 2021, a new Russian MiL helicopter took to the sky. The flight lasted 15 minutes and went according to plan, nothing out of the ordinary, except perhaps the helicopter itself. Remaining a representative of the family of Russian classics, our hero, having become the first full-fledged offshore helicopter in the country, manages to stand out quite strongly from this family. Hello Aviators, Sky here, and today I present to you the MI-171A3. What is offshore? A warm island with a sandy beach and a small office where cunning guys are registered, circumventing the financial regulations of their countries. But today is not about them. Another meaning of offshore is more direct, an object located outside of land, on the sea. It can be ships, various objects such as scientific stations, and most often the infrastructure of energy companies, which in search of resources for a long time have been digging into the seabed. Where there is infrastructure, there is logistics. The obvious solution for maritime logistics is ships, but they are slow and need a lot of fuel. You can fly by planes, but again, try to find an airfield in the middle of the sea, and you can't solve all problems with hydroplanes. This is where rotary wing birds come into play, far more flexible than any other vehicle. But even here, not everything is simple. In the early days of offshore travel, when helicopters first appeared, they were a real lifesaver, and people on ships and platforms were happy with any options. But time passes and the industry grows. Oil and gas companies are developing new fields, often moving farther from the coast in increasingly harsh conditions. The requirements for helicopters are becoming tougher, just flying no longer works. Now we also need safety, reliability, economy, versatility and performance. Transportation also developed. An entire industry has formed, in which hundreds and thousands of helicopters fly in the fleets of both the energy companies themselves and airlines specialized in offshore transportation. The standards for this industry are being developed by IOGP, the International Association of Oil and Gas Producers. Nowadays, there are quite a lot of birds of the offshore world, among them such machines as the Sikorsky S-92, Airbus H-175 and H-225, creations of Leonardo, the AW-139 and 189, and other machines of a similar class. All of them are new or seriously upgraded, they are all good and they all meet the requirements of IOGP, and therefore customers. In Russia, all of this of course also exists, and the heirs of the MI-8 rule here. They generally rule here everywhere. However, even these machines, reliable and well-deserved, still do not quite meet some of the requirements of modern offshore operation. Basic modernization does not solve this problem, and in parks of local operators, non-local machines begin to appear. Russian helicopter builders, of course, are in no hurry to give up their sky, and that being the case, they can also claim a share of the world market for such equipment. But in order to claim something, they need to take a big step. Work on the new machine began in 2018. It was supposed to create a helicopter with a takeoff weight of about 13 tons, a flight range of up to 1000 kilometers or 540 miles, and fully meeting the requirements and standards of offshore operators. There was no desire to make a completely new helicopter. The market is rather narrow, the project wouldn't pay off, and it would take a lot of time to implement. In addition, although the MI-171 does not reach the required bar, it nevertheless stands very close to it, so it was decided to use it as a base. The result of this work within the walls of the Russian helicopters company was the MI-171A3. It has many features, so let's take a closer look. Luckily it was shown in detail at the Moscow Air Show 2021. 19.8 meters long from nose to tail, 25.3 meters including propellers, height 5.3 meters, maximum takeoff weight 13 tons, a big helicopter. For example, the S-92, which is considered very large among offshore vehicles, weighs about 12 tons. Its appearance, of course, causes some dissonance with the name. 
Formally, the MI-171-83 is a modification of the MI-8 or MI-171. The MI-8 family has existed for many decades, and all this time, helicopter builders have been rather conservative in modifying it, adding and updating elements and systems, but without any radical reworking. The A3 model with such a worldview seems avant-garde. So you understand, the MI-171A2 model, which in theory should be very close to our hero, looks like this. It is somewhat reminiscent of the history of the 222 bomber and its modification 222M. We can't say that the MI-171A3 is a completely new helicopter, but it was redesigned quite significantly. The helicopter has a practically new nose and central fuselage section. Composite materials are used very widely here, from which large panels and non-critical structural elements are made. But most of the load-bearing parts are still metal, without extremes. The nose is closer in design to the MI-38 than to older machines. This allowed the engineers to make the cockpit larger, improve ergonomics and visibility. Such an updated design made it possible to reduce weight, or more precisely to maintain it with slightly larger dimensions. Improve aerodynamic quality, slightly reduce noise and vibration in the cabin, modernize air conditioning system, and of course, increase structural stability during a hard landing. This is one of the important requirements of customers. And it looks, let's be honest, much more modern. Safety requirements are not limited to structural stability. Since the helicopter is offshore, it flies mainly over the sea, and flying over the sea allows for some risk of falling into that sea. To ensure that swimming in the sky does not turn into swimming underwater, the helicopter is equipped with a whole set of protective equipment. In the lower part, ballonets are installed on the sides. In the passive state, they look like pads glued to the fuselage, but upon hitting the water, they inflate and keep the helicopter afloat. Plus, two life rafts are hidden right there, each capable of accommodating up to 27 people. Given that the helicopter carries 26 people, including the crew, a situation like on the Titanic is not expected. In terms of evacuation, the requirements of offshore vehicles are also very tough. They must have one exit for two people on board. It sounds like the helicopter's hull should consist entirely of doors, but they found a way. There are two large doors on both sides, all the windows can be pushed out, plus some other ways. As a result, there are as many as 16 exits here, hard to get stuck. The helicopter's landing gear is also seriously different from that of its predecessors, and also incorporates technological solutions from the MI-38. This is especially noticeable on the main landing gear, with large wheels on pyramidal structures, with shock absorbers extending into fairings at the bottom of the fuselage. The landing gear is relatively simple and powerful enough, but for its price. It is non-retractable, which bites a bit from the flight speed. The tail boom is the heritage of the ancestors, the same as that of the family brethren. Except that the helicopter fuselage became a little longer, and the beam was made shorter by just as much. Otherwise, it is the same, a small stabilizer, a fin, and a tail rotor placed on it. The rotor is four-bladed, X-shaped. Everything is familiar to modern MIL helicopters. Such a rotor can also be seen on other machines, civilian and military. The main rotor is 21.3 meters in diameter, 5-bladed, equipped with an upgraded hub mechanization and vibration damper. The blades, of course, are composite. The MI-171A3 power plant is represented by a pair of VK-2500 PSO3 turboshaft engines. The VK-2500 is one of the main fiery huts of the modern Russian helicopter industry, and these engines, replacing the TV-3-117 engines, in various variations are actively installed on many machines like Mil and Kamov, both civilian and military. The VK-2500 PSO-3 is the latest and most advanced version of these engines, equipped with updated automation, a fire extinguishing system, surge protection, FedEx, and slightly improved economy and flight resource. An issue no less important than the flight performance itself. The performance is also good. In cruising mode, each engine produces 1700 horsepower. 
On takeoff, the power rises to a maximum level of 2000 horsepower, and in case of emergency, 2700 horsepower can be squeezed out of the engine, for a short time of course. This mode is able to provide a 13-ton helicopter with the ability to climb and, in the event of a failure of one of the engines, stay in the air for an hour. This is critically important, especially for offshores, where often, except for the helipad on a platform, there is simply no place to land. In normal operation, all this mechanic beauty is capable of providing flight at a speed of 135 knots, with a maximum of 151 knots, a service ceiling of 4000 meters with a dynamic ceiling of 6000 meters, and finally, a range of 900 kilometers, plus approximately 100 kilometers to the range of the MI-171A2. Not a bad bonus, especially over the sea. Okay, enough beating around the bush. It's time to go in and see what's inside. The helicopter has two doors on the sides, one on the port side with a ladder and one large sliding door on the starboard, plus another door in the tail with access to the cargo hold. There are many windows here, why I have already said. The cargo passenger cabin is quite spacious, about 24.3 cubic meters. This volume is enough to accommodate inside passenger seats in a 2 plus 2 layout. Meanwhile the capacity can reach 24 passengers. The seats here of course are not the same as in civil aircraft. Narrower, harder, with 4 point seat belts and having an energy absorbing structure that should save the spines of passengers on a hard landing. Since the helicopter needs to be quite versatile, its cockpit can be easily modified. In the cargo version, up to 4 tons of cargo can be loaded into the cabin, while on an external sling, the helicopter can carry 5 tons. Another version of the helicopter is search and rescue. This is critical for offshore helicopters, as they work in dangerous conditions, and operators prefer to have multiple rescuers in their fleets. You can of course buy another helicopter for these purposes, but unification does its job, and using several versions of the same machine will be easier and cheaper than several different machines. The search and rescue version is equipped with all the elements necessary for this work. Fortunately, there is enough space. In the cabin, you can place four full-fledged medical modules a workplace for a search operator with its own control panel, and on the outside you can hang optical and electronic devices and searchlights, plus a twin winch capable of lifting 272 kilograms. The helicopter in this version is capable of performing search operations at any time of day, being continuously in the air for three and a half hours. Since the helicopter's nose has undergone a major makeover, it's obviously time to see what this nose looks like from the inside. The MI-171A3 is designed to be operated by two crew members, and its cockpit is equipped with the most advanced equipment for Russian civil helicopters. The view after the modification of the nose has obviously changed significantly. Now there's a white glazing here that allows you to see everything around quite comfortably. The anti-icing system of course applies to it, the glazing is heated. All this should enable a pair of pilots to perform their work in the air quite efficiently and without excessive workload, including special situations such as instrumental landings on oil platforms, flights on autopilot and in manual mode, the aforementioned long search operations in different weather conditions. The requirements for the helicopter are serious and, in theory, it must fully meet them. The MI-171A3, despite its more stylish, fashionable and youthful appearance, retained the low demands of its relatives. It is able to work in almost any weather conditions, day and night, at any time of the year, in the temperature range from minus 50 to plus 50 degrees Celsius, in sea conditions and without mandatory hangar storage. At the same time, the more advanced monitoring and maintenance system should simplify and reduce the cost of operation. Well, we've heard beautiful stories, but how is it doing? The MI-171A3 is a prototype and much of the declared performance is in the declared status, for now. 
But this is no longer just a model for air shows. The helicopter has already made its first flight. Certification is starting and serial production is being prepared. The work is being carried out quite actively. If everything goes well, the machine can be considered born quite quickly, without this painful long-term construction from which some of its brothers suffer. And there is every chance of success. The helicopter after all is a modification, so many of its important elements are already there and worked out. It was designed completely digitally, which potentially speeds up and simplifies the program. Obviously, the Mi-171A3 is being created primarily for Russian energy companies that need a full-fledged machine for their tasks, and most likely there will be no particular problems here. It is more difficult to predict the global demand. On the one hand, Russian helicopter builders feel quite confident in foreign markets. Their new offspring is being created in accordance with all IOGP requirements, and among offshore helicopters it can occupy the niche of large machines, and there are not so many of them in the world. On the other hand, this market is already well established and quite saturated, and the rotary wing birds flying over the seas will not give their cake to a newcomer that easily, and the economic crisis has significantly shrunk the appetites of customers. Well, whether the helicopter builders succeed or not, time will tell. And for today's story, there is no more time left. Thanks to the guys from Russian Helicopters for the opportunity to rummage around the new machine. And thank you, dear viewers, for watching all the way up to this point. For complete happiness, all that remains is to like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to watch the videos early, see some exclusive behind the scenes content or just support the channel, consider joining our Patreon community. Fast flights, sometimes over the seas, and soft landings to you, sometimes in unusual places.